Hey guys, Arthur here. Today I would like to show you how you can build a token gated control access in the Next.js application. So this is, I think, quite common uh, use case for NFTs and tokens in general, because you can use this technique that I will show you today with ERC20s and NFT tokens as well. And we can use them uh, for guarding access to the certain pages in our application. So, for example, here we are in the page that is public. And right now I have a page um, that is restricted. So I will try to um, go into it. So it's a special page that I want to be available only if somebody owns certain token. In this particular example, I will check if the caller if somebody visiting the page is actually owning uh, the mem coin called Degen. So here I will just um, use this page. And as you can see, my application immediately redirected me to the token auf. Um, the reason why the redirect happened is that I wrote the logic that checks whether there is a cookie um, that uh, was generated by the server and uh, whether in this cookie there is information if somebody owns this token. If there is no such cookie, we are redirecting to token auf page where we have button proof ownership, which will trigger somebody to actually sign the message. So as you can see right now, I have the MetaMask visible here um, and I have a message like I own this token and if I sign it uh, then you can see that we are on the secret page so right now I can go back uh, and I can visit the token gated page again and it works. The reason why it works is that I generated the cookie. Um, so this cookie, um, we can take a look here in the dev tools in the um, Google Chrome. So we have cookies for the local host three, um, 3000. And then we have the owned tokens cookie, which is um, the JSON web token. So here I can copy paste it. And you can see that we have payload data, which is the token address. Um, so it's ERC 20, we have the owner address. So who is the caller, and then we have a network and some metadata about the JSON web token. So for example, when it expires, I set the expiry date to 24 hours. So you may ask the question now, okay, but isn't the cookie enough? Um, no, it's not enough just to have a cookie because anybody can just trick your system and generate the cookie on your own. But if we have here um, the, the JSON web token, uh, then we can uh, validate it if we know the secret key, because we are signing the JSON web token with the secret key. And then we can verify it on the back end just to make sure that the JSON web token was signed with the proper key that is secret. So right now I will show you how this application actually works. I build it using Next.js 14. So I'm using Ape um, app directory. And also I'm using server side components. So um, we have a typical web tree thing. So you might know it from my previous videos on this channel, I have a wagmi, which is a set of react hooks that I'm using, for example, for making a signature, then we have a web tree model, which allows us to connect the um, cryptocurrency wallet and sign the transactions. And of course, we have VM, which um, is something like eaters. So set of um, functions that um, allows you to interact interact with the EVM blockchains. So how I build this, um, let's take a look maybe in the restricted page how this looks. Um, so I have a function that is called check cookie. And here you can see that I have a very powerful secret. It's just of course, for you know, demonstration in reality, this um, secret should be way uh, more randomized. And here we have the function called check cookie. Um, this function, all it does, it um, uses the newest um, uh, headers from next, um, which allows us inside the server components to read the cookies, we are getting the owned tokens cookie, if there is none, we are just returning false from this function. However, if the cookie is present, then we are 
checking whether this um, JSON web token was signed with our secret. So then we are sure actually that um, not, nobody um, generated the JSON web token on their own because even if somebody will insert some random JSON web token generated locally, uh, then somebody is not knowing our secret key. So here the JSON uh, web token verify function will throw an error and then the check cookie um, would return false. And then inside this restricted page, we are just checking whether the cookie is valid. If it's valid, if it's not valid, or if it's not present, then we are immediately redirecting from this page. Uh, so this page is not accessed. So this is how um, the guarding uh, actually of accessing some certain page works. So right now, let's take a look how um, the um, the auth works. So here what I'm doing is basically we have again, um, but this time we have a client component because we are in uh, Next.js. So we have to specify if we want to have a next um, client component. And here we have the logic that first of all, um, gets the current account. So thanks to Wagmi, we know if somebody is logged in. Uh, of course, um, before um, this, this will work, you have to double check that your whole application is wrapped in to the with the providers from Wagmi because otherwise you don't have access to this react hooks. So make sure that application is um, is wrapped. And by the way, if you want to check the code of this project, of course, feel free. It's on my GitHub. It's in the description and you can find it there. Um, and um, so, so it's really important to actually have um, these uh, providers wrapped because otherwise this kind of um, hooks like use account or use sign message, it won't work. So I'm checking if somebody is already um, uh, authenticated with the cryptocurrency wallet. Um, if not, I'm showing the button that allows you to sign in. Um, if, if somebody is already um, um, connected with the wallet, then I have a button which is proof ownership and this is calling the handle claim function. And the handle claim function, first of all, it checks again, if somebody is actually uh, authenticated uh, with the wallet, if we know what is the address of the current user, then we are using a use sign message hook, which allows us to asynchronously call the function and basically await it. So the rest of the code is not executed. And then we have the message that we want to sign it. Um, so uh, then we have this, um, uh, if the um, signature is successfully generated, we have it under seek variable. And then I'm calling a very important function, which here is a claim access function. And this is actually a server function. So we will take a look on it. But what we are passing there is a token address. So the address that we want to check, then we have the signature um, and owner and address and network. Um, actually, the token address, of course, can be moved to the claim access, but I just modeled it that way. I think for educational purposes, it's fine. And then if I'm going to the claim access um, server action, uh, what happens here is actually, first of all, we are validating um, the um, signature. Um, so we have the address of who signed it, and then we have message, and then we have signature. And if somebody altered this um, signature, then we uh, will know because the verify message will throw an error. Um, if the signer would be different, or the message would be different, um, then we would know and this will just throw an error. Then we have a public client, which allows us to call um, the blockchain to query some data from the blockchain and we will use it just to call um, the public methods that are available both in NFTs and ERC20s, which is called balance off. And here we have just um, the balance off, we can check uh, what's the balance of the caller. And if this balance is zero, then we can throw an error and just stop the execution. Otherwise, if everything is fine, we can just generate the token. Um, and here the token, maybe the name is not fortunate because we are not generating ERC20 token or NFT token, but we are generating JSON web token that is signed with our secret just that we can verify it as I mentioned it before. Then we can specify the set expiration date. Um, so um, and of course, sign it with this, uh, the key. And then uh, inside um, our server action, what we can do in Next.js, it's quite great, we can uh, generate a cookie 
and just give it a name, uh, set it um, to HTTP only and provide the token. And then um, once this um, the server action is executed, we have the token back. And if the token is returned, we can just arrest, um, we can just redirect a uh, user to the restricted page and then on this page everything works because this time the check cookie returns true because first of all we have the cookie and then we have a json web token inside which is signed actually with the server key and basically that's it that's how you can do it uh, of course it's quite simple example if you have bigger application maybe you want to store who owns which tokens in the database and it's a bit more complex however i think if you just want to um, deploy some special block or some surprise for the owners of your token then i think it's enough so if you have some questions to this or some proposals to the next videos just let me know and write in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe this channel to see more stuff like that thank you for attention and see you